Hello everyone. In this video, we will talk about the chest leads. This clip will not only include the anatomical landmarks, which are important in the context of the chest leads, but we'll, we will uh, uh, identify the area where we place the chest leads and how the chest leads are displayed on the ECG paper. So this is a brief topic about the chest leads. Now at the end of the video, if you like the video, if you think this video gives you any sort of benefit, then press the bell icon after you have subscribed the channel and also like and share the video. This is the only way you can help the channel to grow. So when we start our discussion about the chest leads, uh, there are certain factors which are very important. First uh, thing to remember is that there are six chest leads. Uh, on the machine, when we, we are dealing with the leads, the, these are printed with the C1, C2, C3, C4, C5, and C6. And C stands for chest leads. But on the ECG paper, these are displayed as the V1, V2, V3, V4, V5, and V6. So there is a difference. This, is, this should be kept in mind. And then there are important anatomical landmarks which we need to remember before we are going to place the chest leads on the chest itself. This is a sternum. This green colored is a sternum. Now right on top of it there is a depression or shallow point which we call the suprasternal notch. Now underneath the suprasternal notch on the sternum there is a ridge. There is a bony depression or a ridge which we call the angle of Loewe or manubrium sterni. Now, why it is important to first feel the manubrium sternae because only then you can locate the second intercostal space which is right uh, uh, parallel to the angle of Loewe. Some people uh, think that we should place the chest lead one here. No, this is not true. We only locate the second intercostal space because we are to go down further down to the fourth intercostal space which is then important because after the second intercostal space comes the third intercostal space and then the fourth intercostal space. Now uh, the chest lead placement uh, is done with a very particular anatomical positioning. For example, uh, the chest lead one uh, are which we call the C1 is placed in the fourth intercostal space on the right side of the sternum or in the right parasternal area. So it's happening on the right side and it's in the fourth intercostal space which we have located in, uh, in the last slide. And the uh, chest lead 2 is placed in the fourth intercostal space on the left side of the sternum in the left parasternal area. Chest lead 3 is not placed before the chest lead 4 and there is a reason to it. We will see it in a second. Chest lead 4 is placed in the 5th intercostal space which is just below the 4th intercostal space on the left side and in the mid clavicular line. This is the clavicle. It's a middle of the clavicle. You draw a line under, uh, coming all the way downwards and where it touches the 5th intercostal space on the left side, here we place the C4. Now C3 is placed uh, between the C2 and the C4, wherever it falls actually. Both C5 and C6, they are placed in the fifth uh, intercostal space on the left side, but C5 is placed in the anterior axillary line, while C6 is placed on the uh, mid axillary line. Now there is a general rule about the uh, wave of depolarization and its representation on a ECG paper and that principle is when a wave of depolarization of the atrial or the ventricular muscle, it moves towards an electrode or lead, it generates a positive deflection where we see a tall R wave which is upward deflection and a very small S wave and this will be known as the positive lead. But if a wave of depolarization moves away from the lead, it generates a negative deflection where we see a very deep S wave and a very small R wave. But if the wave of depolarization is moving towards and away from the electrode in an equal proportion, then it will generate an isoelectric deflection or where we see the height of the uh, R wave and the depth of the uh, S wave which are almost equal in proportion. So this is known as isoelectric lead. 
Now, based on that principle that when the wave of depolarization is moving towards a particular electrode or lead, it generates a positive deflection. And if it goes away from it, it generates a negative deflection and it's going towards and at, away from it in equal proportion, it generates an isoelectric line. Look at here, C1 and C2, they are located towards the right ventricle. But the major, major, major portion of the wave of depolarization is generated by the left ventricle because that is the syst systolic ventricle. That is the ventricle which is throwing the blood to the rest of the body. So the major, major portion of the wave of depolarization is coming from the left ventricle which is away from the C1 and C2. So C1 and C2 which are on the ECG paper are V1 and V2. They see the wave of depolarization sort of going away from it. That is why they are generating a very deep S wave and a very small R wave. And actually this small R wave is because of the initial septal depolarization which is coming towards them. So all in all C1 and C2 they are the negative uh, chest leads. But if you look at the lead C3 and especially the C4, C4 sees the wave of depolarization coming towards it and then going away from it. And that's the reason it generates an equal proportion height of the R wave to the depth of the S wave. That is why C4, which is on the ECG paper is as V4, is known as isoelectric chest lead. While C3, which is on the ECG paper is V3, has got a a relatively small R wave as compared to S wave, but R has got uh, some height as compared to C1 and C2 because now it is looking at the wave of depolarization coming towards it. But when we look at the V5 and the V6, which are represented on the uh, lead placement as C5 and C6, they are located right in front of the wall, anterior wall and, uh, and anterior and the lateral wall of the left ventricle. So they are looking at the major portion of the wave of depolarization coming towards them. That is why they generate a very tall R wave and a very small S wave. This is known as a normal progression of the R wave. As we move from the V1 to V3, V4, V5, V6, the height of the R keeps on increasing while the depth of the S wave keep on decreasing. This is known as a normal progression of the R wave which is very important physiologically. Now, if we look back on, on another very important aspect, the relationship of the chest lead with the anterior wall of the heart. Now, if we uh, for a second take off the sternum and rest of the body parts and we have got only a heart which has got two atria and the two ventricles and there is an interventricular septum and this is the inter uh, atrial septum but here we are concerned with the interventricular septum. Now, here we see that chest lead 1 and 2 they are located towards the anterior wall of the heart but very near to the uh, uh, septum and these are known as the anteroseptal leads. C1 and C2 are the anteroseptal leads as opposed to the C5 and C6 which are though they are they are located on the anterior wall but they are located towards the lateral part of the left ventricle. So these will be known as anterolateral leads and C3 and C4 they are purely located right in front of the anterior wall and we call them C4, 3 and 4 are the pure anterior wall leads. But C1, C2, C3, C4, C5 and C6, they are known as the anterior chest leads, but they are subdivided into anteroseptal, pure anterior and anterolateral leads because that helps us sort of know about the ischemic changes going on in the heart.